Cool. Well, I have to say, uh, having sat on Jalan Ampang quite often in traffic, I'm looking forward to seeing someone travel down there at about 230 kilometres an hour. Um, I, I guess one of the really important things with, with street circuits is you are bringing racing to the people. And our job is to do it in a way that, sure, we've got three days of an event, but clearly we have to build and dismantle all the infrastructure that makes that track safe. DBKL undertaking the works that will enable the safety with, with the removal of traffic islands and civil works. But well, the key part of what my technical team will be working on and, and have been working on for quite some months now is to achieve the construction of the track for the SIC team to come and run the, the motor racing on in a way that disrupts KL uh, and the city's movement as little as possible. And putting that in perspective, there's around 147 entry points onto the 3.2 kilometres that make up this track. So throughout the, the construction, or the installation, I should say, of the barriers and the, and the safety fences, etc., that will make up the, uh, the arena for the motorsports, if you like, our job is to make sure that business and traffic, etc., undergoes the, the least possible disruption. And sure, right at the end, when we're all excited and ev the event's there, you know, it's, it's clear that there'll be disruption, but that's the exciting part. The key thing is, in that lead-up, that we keep KL moving as well as possible. And in the background, we've got traffic management plans being written to help uh, people in the environs of KL uh, around the area during the event, those that need to get within the area having the proper access. So it's not quite as um, glamorous as the motorsport itself, but clearly it's all an integral part of making the event a, a really successful one for KL. Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. Yes, so so there's uh, we need to create a blank canvas for for motor racing. It's a, a key difference between the way the streets are used now and and what's between those curbs. And so with D, we we've identified and then talked and nego and uh, agreed with DBKL on the works that are required. Uh, we then undertook three uh, committee walks over sectors of the track with uh, the contractors undertaking the works, etc. That's all been a, the, the first stage of the process. And about, I think now about 14 days ago, the first work started with, in areas uh, where there's traffic islands, etc., and up near the junction of Raja Chulan and uh, Jalan Salt and Ismail. Uh, through that sector, the first stage was for the Parks and Gardens Department of DBKL to remove uh, key substantial plants for relocation and, re and possibly replacement later. That's, that happened first. And the first area that's been undertaken in terms of removal and, and preparation of civil is actually what's turn 11 of our track, which is at the bottom of uh, Jalan Raja Chul and outside the pavilion. You'll see there where it goes under the KLCC walkway. There was an island there. The, the, the road's current alignment would use a slip lane. It's too narrow for the safety of a racetrack. So we're re realigning to have a 90 degree turn through there. And you'll see that that whole area's had the kerbs demolished, a sub base put in. There were some services in there that had to be dealt with. And as you come up that road all the way, the kerbs have been cut in preparation to uh, progressively work through those areas. Plants, etc., have been removed so that they're saved. Um, there's also some service relocations involving power, etc. So there's a little bit of a lead time on that. But the, the most obvious place, if you want to go out and see work like that, that's quite visible, is is at that intersection underneath the KLCC walkway. Yeah, uh, Jalan Parak and Jalan Raja Chulan. 